Hi everyone, this is my January the 5th New Moon Partial Solar Eclipse in Capricorn video. Um, the New Moon was yesterday, January the 5th, 5.29pm Pacific Time. Um, I am clearly doing this on January the 6th. We are roughly 22 odd hours. Actually, we are exactly... We are exactly 22 hours after the new moon partial solar eclipse. I just checked and it's 329 Pacific. I'm very amused by that. Um, not that it means anything. I'm just like amused that it's 29 minutes past the hour. Okay, let's go. There are four things that I want to discuss. But before we get to that, a few quick things. This is probably going to be one of the two or three most important videos I do all year uh, because it's going to set up information about eclipses um, that are going to be relevant 2019 and 2020. So feel free to bookmark this, save this, know how to get back to it, etc, etc, etc. I'm going to include a link to this video on other videos I do over the course of the year where I feel this information is relevant. So I'm going to try and keep it in front of you as much as possible, but you may want to go back to it. Also, this is going to be a longish video given everything that needs to be discussed. But as you go through it, if you feel like coming back to it, come back to it with a pad and paper so that you can take down dates and what, why those dates are important. I'm going to give you a number of different dates for the three or four scenarios, the three or four things that I feel are important and worth mentioning right now. Um, also, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, Share this video if you find it useful. Like the video, comment on the video, etc., etc., etc. I will appreciate it. It helps. It helps get get it circulated a whole lot more. So especially if you find it useful, why not? Other people can avail of the information as well. Uh, finally, this is a general video. I do not have your chart in front of me. I do not know whether signs of Capricorn or Pisces or Cancer. Those are the three signs that I'm going, I'm going to mention the most in this video. Sit in your chart or Leo. And so if you know that, then apply what I'm going to say to that particular uh, section of the chart. And I'm talking about Western tropical signs. If you don't know that, then just sit back and enjoy, enjoy the information and see what applies and what resonates with you. It's meant for enjoyment anyway. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want to mention is that yesterday we had a new moon. And I hope that after the new moon at 529 p.m. Pacific on January 5th, you felt greater energy, a surge of energy, a surge of productivity. New moon on January the 5th, full moon on January 20th, next new moon February 4th. And so when it comes to your energy and your activity, there's going to be an increase. Things are going to accelerate and intensify towards that full moon on January 20th Pacific time. So for some people, it'll be the 21st in Leo, which is also an eclipse, and I will cover that later. Um, And then the energy will start to wind down over the next following two weeks as we head towards the February 4th new moon in Aquarius. So 14 days of acceleration culminating in the full moon and 14 days of winding down. Uh, So by all means, this really is the start of the new year, and I hope you are already feeling it. I hope you are paying attention to new sets of intentions or whatever it is that you want to do or set, especially if you know where the sign of Capricorn falls. I'm speaking relatively quickly because I know how much information I have to cover. Um, so, so, so just, just, just enjoy the surge of activity and know that right now Uranus is stationary in the sky and it's going to be moving direct. So between now. And March the 5th or 6th, depending on where you are on this planet, physically speaking, um, all planets will be direct. And we rarely have windows like this. So it's all systems go. It's forward movement. Forward movement could include shedding things and losing things in order to move forward as well. It's just more action and greater progress. And as I've said in previous videos, we always complain when planets are retrograde and we're not seeing a lot of forward movement and we have to rethink things or stay in place and progress is not made. But I always say be careful what you wish for because then when forward movement comes and all this stuff comes at you or you're required to get off your butt and make things happen, even if it means shedding things in order to move forward, it requires energy, activity, action, 
proactively creating what you want and moving in the direction that you want to move in. And so since we are, since human beings tend to be discontented and inertia bound, you know, it, it, forward movement as much as it's wished for doesn't always suit us either. But start the new year now and put this, you know, put the stuff you need on your back and move forward. We have two months, I would say we have till the end of February to really actively try to create what we want to create and to plant those seeds and to move forward. The energy of the new moon, insofar as it's an inaugurating new moon of this year, at a time when all planets are starting to move direct. Um, some are flying forward, one is starting to move direct. Um, it inaugurates this period of, of forward movement, even if the energy of the eclipse is a little bit contrary to this, but I will cover that later. So that's item number one of four. It's a new moon, it's forward movement time, let's go. Number two, I have referenced in previous videos that since the middle of November, crises that came up in 2015-2016, interestingly, out of the blue since the middle of November, have come up for opportunities for healing. It's possible, and so, so for astrology aficionados, this would be related to the eclipses that occurred in Pisces in 2015-2016, and I'm much more interested in late 2015 and first three quarters of 2016. Um, if you really want some sort of a bookend to those crises being created. Since March, since November the 15th till the end of last year, which was about a week ago, it could have been that you were hit from something by the, from the outside, that you were driven to take some actions. And I've mentioned that this healing could create the possibility for a certain kind of resolution that almost seemed unimaginable. That, oh my God, you, we can actually live with this and function with this to some extent. I'm not going to say that it's happy and I'm not going to say that it's completely content. What is to some extent? What is? But, but there's an opportunity. It's not just an opportunity. You will be forced to. You will be moved to heal, put a bandage on, secure whatever it is that came up as a crisis. Whether it was a personal health issue, whether it was a mental health issue, whether it was an emotional health issue whether it was something physical where the crisis was created, whether it was a financial crisis or a crisis within a family or a crisis within a marriage or whatever it was, within a marriage, to finish that word that I just kind of glossed over, whatever it was, November 15th, as I said, to March, April of 2019 is a time of healing. Now, we have a bit of a break. I, I'm mentioning this only because... Outside of the new moon and forward movement and whatever's happening on the Cancer Capricorn axis as far as the eclipses are concerned, this energy is going to still be quite important and quite present in the first quarter of this year and the second quarter of this year. And specifically, we may get a bit of a break in order to focus on some other things till February the 10th, but February the 10th to April the 20th. February the 10th to April the 20th, there will be a number of planets that will be coming through the sector progressively to address the healing. And I said Mercury would be retrograde on March the 5th. It's going to be retrograde in this part of the chart, March the 5th to March the 28th. So it's likely that there are plans that you are putting in place and conversations that are happening and things that are happening in order to heal something. And then between March the 5th and March the 28th, things need to be reconsidered or reviewed or gone over one more time so that March the 28th to April the 20th is when we can actually experience some sort of resolution or some sort of final culmination of healing. So if you are already in the action, act of healing something, it's a health crisis or a personal crisis or a family crisis or a marriage crisis, know and understand that after February the 10th, your attention is going to be on these issues again and the month of March is going to be somewhat disorienting and annoying and confusing. Sorry about the helicopter that's flying somewhere around. It is Los Angeles. They are incessant. Um, nothing I can do about it. You never know when they're going to come, ar come around, whatever part of Los Angeles you're in. Um, so so um, the month of March is going to... 
require you to go over things one more time and maybe a little bit disorienting, maybe a little frustrating, but maybe, but important and essential. And then March the 20th, as I said, yeah, March the 20th to April 20th is when you can actually feel like things can, things can be brought into a, into, into a better place. More solutions can be put in place. So, sorry, I've spent a lot of time on this, but it is still going to be important. Now, let's talk about the eclipses. The eclipses are, some astrologers believe, I'm one of them, the most important events in a year. Because they give us a broad outline as to where it is that we are heading towards and what it is that we need to release. So if you think of your life as a boat that is somehow anchored to something and the boat needs to go towards this point, you need to let go of the anchor, you need to cut the cord, you need to cut the weight, release whatever needs to be released so that the boat can move in the direction that it needs to move into. Eclipses that are about where it is that you need to lean into or go towards tend to produce events that are more interesting and exciting than the eclipses where we have to release something, which can often be painful because we are often attached to something. Or even if we know that a cord needs to be cut, cutting those cords is always challenging and difficult. However, in the divine scheme of things, it is as if God or the universe is saying, you need to move in this direction and you need to let this go and you need to trust that if you move in this direction you will be fine and you will be happy and you will be successful. We as people feel like, am I sure? Do I go in the direction? What happens to the boat? I don't know. Will I make it? Will there be whirlpools? Shall I cut? Really? Shall I leave? And the eclipses will make it clear that something has to be released and you get to move forward. Now, when it comes to 2019 and 2020, the first six months of, two, of both these years, 2019, 2020, we're dealing with the eclipses of release. And the second six months, generally speaking, but pretty, pretty close, of 2019 and 2020, we're dealing with the eclipses where we move forward. There's a true line to all of this. So you can't always just say, well, the move forward movement will only happen in the second half of the year and the releasing will happen in the first half of the year. It's a combined thing. You're releasing something in order to move somewhere, and both will be in conversation at all times. Now, the eclipses of release are happening in the sign of Capricorn. The eclipses where you have to head to or go towards are happening in the sign of Cancer. Generally speaking, a political analysis that you will see all over the place is the feeling that we have to let go of and release Capricornian hyper-conservative, hyper-traditional masculine structures and move towards the feminine, towards greater care, towards dissolving of power, you know, kind of, you know, let go of, let go of nationalism and banks and, and traditional structures and conservative structures of accountability and governance and severity and move towards the divine feminine, uh, greater understanding, greater connectedness, greater love and nurture um, and that at least as far as the archetypes are concerned of the signs um, that's the direction in which we're to move into and what it is that we are to release and certainly people who are watching things from a political perspective may say okay that sort of makes sense but more importantly eclipses are more interesting to me with regard to how it is that they're affecting each of us personally so eclipses of release <sighs> Bear with me. This is important and this is interesting. In 2019, we had the solar eclipse in Capricorn on January the 5th, and we will have the corresponding lunar eclipse in Capricorn on July the 16th. So there's an arc being set up of activity from January the 5th to July the 16th, where we will get clarity with regard to what it is that we need to release. Why will we get clarity? Because we're going to have the same set of eclipses in Capricorn occur, solar eclipse on December 26th, 2019, and a corresponding lunar eclipse on July the 5th, 2020. Yeah. When eclipses occur over the course of a year, 
year and a half or so typically. And so we get multiple eclipses in the same sign. And it isn't unusual for the first set of eclipses to bring letting go of things and moving towards something is not an immediate process. It's a gradual process. And there's something evolutionary. The chart you, your life is evolving to these points. So it's not just, you know, a fairy godmother or father, godfather comes in and kind of puts a magic wand on you and you instantly transform. It is a months-long process. And so January the 5th to July the 16th of this year may bring some important messages and clarity around what it is that needs to be released or given up with the releasing potentially happening from December 26th of 2019 to July 5th, 2020. This is a general reading. For some people, you will be fine that you are releasing things in 2019. Um, it's, it, eclipses hit people in different ways. Some people feel the impact of an eclipse right away. I'm feeling the impact of this eclipse, for instance, right away. Now, what it means and what the actual timeline of events is going to be, I'm going to wait and watch and see. Some people feel the impact of a solar eclipse two months to the date. So January the 5th to March the 5th. And I would watch events that are occurring the week before and week after January 5th, where we are at right now, and March the 5th, the week before and a week after, to try and get some clues of what it is, to be perfectly blunt, what do I need to lose? What do I need to shed? What do I need to release? What do I need to excrete? What, do, what cords do I need to cut in order to be able to move forward? If you know where the sign of, Capricorn sits in your chart, you can really start to ponder it. And as I've mentioned in videos before, releasing something does not have to necessarily be releasing something physical. It doesn't have to be cutting the cord on a relationship. It doesn't have to be cutting the cord on something physical like a home or money or... Uh, it could be releasing an attachment to something. It could be releasing self-worth or self-confidence issues. It could be releasing things, habits, patterns that are compromising you in some way. When it comes to things like health and diet and exercise, it could be releasing an old way of life and moving towards a new way of life. So you've got to pay attention to what is coming up around this time period, January 5th, week before week after, March 5th, week before week after, to start to see if some clarity can be attained. The corresponding lunar eclipse is on July the 16th. And so then you need to pay attention to July the 16th, week before, week after, May the 16th, week before, week after. So we have a timeline here. January 5th to March the 5th. Intimations and the start of a process of releasing. March the 5th to May the 16th. Let's just call it a period of confusion. It's as if January 5th to March 5th brings a certain amount of clarity. It comes in, the wrecking ball comes in, and it wrecks things. And between March the 5th and May the 16th, we're like, oh, everything has fallen to pieces around me. Now I've got to figure out what to do with it. And May the 16th to July the 16th will give you some sort of a sense of culmination of picking up those pieces and getting to a place of completing something. The same process will happen again, but this time with greater decisiveness and activity and action between December the 26th of 2019 and July the 5th of 2020. Remember with eclipses that sometimes things are eclipsed from our life. The frequency of people passing on for people who are dealing with that or dealing with situations, not just people, animals, situations, something can get taken away. And, and some people would say, well, we're always under the shadow of some sort of an eclipse. And I would say, no, pay attention to the dates and the timelines I'm mentioning. It's really around eclipse time. could be around March the 5th to May the 16th. But, but you know, just, just in this case, because we're talking about an eclipse of release, it really is thinking about what it is that needs to be eclipsed from our life in order to be able to move in the direction that we need to move into. And as I said, not unusual that the first round of eclipses, if there are multiple rounds, and in this case we have two, 
brings instinctive, important, intuitive messaging with things needing to be completed next year. Now, there's a lot being said about the sign of Capricorn. We covered the new moon. That was item one. We covered the sign of Pisces and healing things from 2015, 2016 that carries on in February, March, April. And I'm going to come to that in future videos. Number two, we are covering the solar eclipse. Number three, I want to mention and reference something as far as the sign of Capricorn is concerned because you're going to see this in other videos or other messages. There's a lot going on in the sign of Capricorn for, till 2020. And, you know, all sorts of dramatic things are mentioned. Um, at the time of this eclipse, we have Mercury, Saturn, the Sun and the Moon, Pluto, and the South Node all in Capricorn creating this hotbed of activity. The energies in this part of the chart where things need to be released are very, very complex because we have energies that are asking us to build something and we have energies that are asking us to shed something. The most constructive part of this energy that's going to be under a certain amount of pressure given the other planets involved will come in after December 3rd, 2019. So Saturn came into Capricorn. Pluto was, has been in Capricorn for a while, the planet of death and transformation. So wherever Capricorn is in your chart is going through changes that you cannot control anyway. Saturn came in here in December 2018, 17, 2017. And so for a year or so, we have already in this part of the chart been having to contend with and deal with behaviors and patterns that are not helping us, that are not in our best interests, and that are sabotaging our ability to be our best and our most fruitful and our most productive and fulfilled selves. And now we have the eclipses of release here. Again, hammering to this point of let go of what has served its purpose. And one way to think of it, you know, when it comes down to it because of the way eclipses are set up is what, what part of your identity needs to be released? And wherever Capricorn is, Saturn is going to be require you to put in a fair amount of hard work there anyway in order to create a really strong foundation. Now, Jupiter comes in here December 3rd, 2019. And sorry, this is, the, this is the most complicated part of it. But this is really why I'm mentioning Jupiter coming in is to say that the second round of eclipses, December 26th of 2019 to July 5th, 2020, will happen when the planet of new beginnings, auspicious new beginnings, is going to be in this part of the chart to help us rebuild whatever needs to be rebuilt. So there is a timeline, there is a narrative, and it's a complex and complex narrative. And everyone's talking about the grand conjunction in this sign. The grand conjunction comprises Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto all meeting up with each other in 2020. They're all three are not meeting up with each other at the same time or the same date. Saturn and Pluto are going to meet up with each other. Jupiter and Pluto are going to meet up with each other. Jupiter and Saturn are going to meet up with each other at the end of 2020, just as they're entering into Aquarius. So, so there is some heavy hitting. But I'm going to tell you, if you were to say which is going to be the harder year, I wouldn't, I don't know, you know, it's, it's a toss up. 2019, in terms of setting us up for the changes, is not going to be without it. Pay attention. We're moving towards something. And something that is resetting our lives in a significant way for decades to come in 2019 and 2020. Significant resets. And so these eclipses are part of this, are part of this pattern. And if you view it from a sense of, oh, this forward movement is fated and these are directions in which I need to go and these are things I need to release in order to be able to move forward and be freer and to move forward, great. If you stay anchored in the things that you need to release, you will not be in the flow. So I'm going to bring item number three, the eclipses, to a close because we have the 24-minute mark. God help me. And say that 
January 5th, week before, week after, March the 5th, week before, week after, pay attention to what it is you think God, the universe is telling you you need to release. You don't have to act on it and hit the core, you know. You can give it time to see how things develop. You know, act like you normally would, but just pay attention. It's the first of many dates that are going to be in 2019, 2020 that are going to be helpful in cluing us. The fourth thing that I wanted to mention quite simply, and I'm going to talk about this more in a week and a half's time, is that we have a new moon, uh, January 5th, yesterday, full moon, January 20th. And this full moon is the last of the Leo Aquarius eclipses. Uh, it's a full moon in Leo, and it is referencing events that have been in place, trying to come to completion, resolution, incorporation of lessons learned that have been in place since December December the 9th, 2016. So the old eclipses from December the 9th, 2016 are finally reaching some sort of a culmination by January the 20th of 2019 so that the new set of eclipses can really begin in earnest. We had a flavor of the new set of eclipses between July the 12th of 2017 and August the 12th, September the 12th, 2017 is to hints about what direction to move in. Uh, and I'm going to put a link to my Cancer Solar Eclipse video at the end of this video, just so you can go back and listen to that um, if you feel the need to, if you can make it through all this. Um, interesting and exciting stuff, uh, but nerdy stuff. And, and, and the eclipses in Cancer Capricorn now begin in earnest from the one yesterday. Um, so, so I'll talk a little bit more in terms of timelines and what is trying to come to completion by January the 20, 20th in the next video on that in about a week and a half's time. But in the meantime, do try and pay attention to whether there's some clarity with regard to what it is that needs to be shed or released. Um, for some of you, you will feel this shift as of yesterday. And for some of you, you will feel it around March the 5th. Um, and in general, outside of all this eclipse stuff, Take yesterday, January the 5th, as the start of the new year and get in action and make your life happen. Okay. Um, as I said, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment on it, share it, blah, 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 and I will be back in touch with you all in about a week and a half. Thank you. Oh, and you can inquire about rates and information for reading. I'm going to include my email address in the area uh, below below the YouTube video or below on Facebook so that you have that information as well. Okay, thanks, bye.